it's a hard job. You've got to have somebody helping you. The instrumental activities of being a caregiver, like this new term called instrumental activities of daily living, those are the things like helping with the medicine, helping with the legal stuff, the insurance phone calls that you do, the medical back and forth, taking them places, transportation issues, getting them places. Those things are time consuming, folks. So time consuming that caregivers on average spend about 24 hours a week caring for their loved one. And I'm talking about working caregivers who work a full-time job and go home and spend about another 24 hours a week caring for a loved one. Okay, I can't help myself. I have to give you a stat because I think it's important. Let's talk about those caregivers and their health and how they don't put themselves first. And studies show that caregivers truly are at a higher risk than non-caregivers for things like depression, stroke, hypertension, many other diseases, diabetes. For caregivers who are caring for someone who has any form of dementia, like Alzheimer's, about 40% of them die first. Now let's fast forward, let's age these caregivers to people who were over the age of 70, spousal caregivers, your frail elderly caring for their spouses. When that's the picture, about 70% of those caregivers die first. Typically, they're older, obviously, and they've got their own illnesses, and they're not tending to them. And about 70% of them die first. That is not what I want for anybody in this room. So let's talk about this a little bit. All of us are going to be involved in caregiving. I said that. So where are you on this stage? And I might go through this part a little quickly, because I do know that all of you are caregivers. But let's talk about those who are caregivers and some of the impact and the importance of self-care. Caregiving is not for the weak, right? <laughs> the physical stresses involved can be tremendous. Caregivers are really high risk for shoulder injuries, back injuries, all that pulling and lifting and transferring. Many people don't get teaching on how to properly do that. We often offer that at these conferences. Physical therapists teach that because there's a way you're supposed to do that so you don't injure yourself. Environmental stresses. Sometimes you're moving everything around your house to accommodate wheelchairs and hospital beds and bedside commodes. Sometimes they're put in the middle of your living room, right? Because that's the only space for all of that. All that stuff just really doesn't go with my Mediterranean decor. I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it one little bit. But you know what? You do what you have to do for your loved one. Lots of changes that impact your life that cause stress. The social stress is one that really worries me because a lot of caregivers um, are very guilty of isolating. They stop doing what they love doing. It's just going to lunch with your girlfriends or out with the guys to throw a bowling ball or fishing or play cards or whatever it is that brings you joy and pleasure, many caregivers stop because they think I have to be here, I have to be doing this all the time. Nobody else can do it as good as me. Is it the hell? No. Wrong. Keep doing the things that you love to do. Do not isolate yourself. What does isolation usually lead to? Bingo. Don't want that for you guys. Financial stresses I've talked about a little bit, but I haven't said that about 40% of caregivers report using up all or most of their savings in this role. I read another study this week that said caregivers spend on average about $7,000 a year out of their pocket taking care of their loved one. And again, many quit work prematurely. The emotional stress almost doesn't even need to be mentioned. You're seeing someone you love decline. You know the eventual outcome. There's sadness. Maybe, maybe there's some guilt. Maybe there's some anger. Maybe you didn't have any choice in this role. There are a lot of caregivers who are thrust into that role with absolutely no choice, or maybe they felt obligated. Maybe that builds a little resentment. Maybe if you're caring for parents, you don't have siblings helping. That is incredibly common. The role of caring for parents typically falls on one person. If there's a daughter, it's typically the oldest daughter. And let me just add, she works in healthcare. 
everything falls on that person. And you know what? I did it, and I wouldn't change it for the world. But it, it, it took a toll. It can be very challenging and stressing. <laughs> so those are the emotional stresses. I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the health care risks. The bottom line is, if a caregiver is caring for a loved one and they're experiencing exhaustion or chronic illness or depression or any of these things I've so joyfully talked about today, they can't perform their caregiving duties well enough to really take good care of their loved one. And so as a, as a result of that, their loved one's condition may decline, which of course increases the caregiver's responsibilities. And so you've got this circle going, right? Bottom line is, and I've said it thousands of times in my career, please take good care of yourself. 